Welcome golfers, today we're in the baseball hallway. Yep, you heard me correctly. We are going to be talking about baseball and golf. Don't worry, we're also talking about golf, but I do want to talk about the differences and the similarities between a baseball swing and a golf swing because many of my students actually have played baseball before, whether it's you know in college or whether it's just been outside with their brothers or their dad. So it is a motion that is much more well known and actually maybe even looked at than the golf swing. So especially if you're just getting into golf and you've played a lot of baseball in your life, that's amazing. There's a lot of really good things that you're doing, but there's also two to three things that I want to point out that every baseball player is doing that's causing you from hitting the ball really well in golf. So let's jump into it. All right. So the three things I want to touch on. Number one is your external internal rotation of your trail arm and trail elbow and shoulder. Those two go together. Number two, I want to talk about the backswing, which is very different slash non-existent in the baseball swing uh, versus the golf swing. And number three, your weight shift as you're moving through the ball. So those are the three things we're going to touch on. They're going to be really important for you to understand the difference so you can optimize your golf swing if you are a baseball player or if you've played baseball more than you've played golf. Before I jump into today's hallway tips, I do want to take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, which is BetterHelp for providing such an outstanding service to everybody out there who's looking to feel their best on and off the golf course. It is my job to make you all better golfers. And with that, I simply can't ignore the mental side of the game because as we all know, how we feel over the ball really matters. Your performance in golf and in life can be heavily dependent on your mental state. So it's always been a massive priority for myself when I'm playing and also when I'm teaching my students that they are all in the best headspace possible. Just like during a golf round, many unexpected things happen in life and the more efficient and healthy you can deal with these adversities, the better off you will be. Personally, like so many other people, I also struggled with mental health throughout my amateur and professional career. You know, I was under a lot of pressure, a lot of the times, life, golf, everything. So I've worked with many therapists over the years and really finding that perfect mental health professional for yourself is going to make things a lot easier. You can be able to implement their help a lot better and it's going to make life a lot more enjoyable. Something that I really like about BetterHelp is that you can select your therapist and mental health professional that you want to work with according to very cool parameters. So you can even say which belief system you'd like them to have, which background you'd like them to have, the communication style you'd like to use, direct or not so direct. And I just love this. If I had a platform like this in college when I was doing my therapy for the first time, my therapy experience would have been a lot better. If you're looking for self-improvement and self-growth on and off the golf course, I really highly encourage you to check out BetterHelp. If you use the link in my description box below, you can get 10% off your first month of therapy. All right, so number one, I want to talk about the internal external rotation of your right elbow and your right shoulder because in baseball and we have our little short club here because this I can really wave around a lot more in the hallway without dinging my walls so you know that's the goal so the external rotation internal rotation in baseball and I know nothing about baseball guys like other than you hit you run you fall I'm not sure <laughs> but I have studied the motion very much in depth and compared it to the golf motion so this is where we end up number one when they're in the back in the back in the back swing See, I don't even know how to call these positions, but when you're on top of the backswing in your baseball swing, your right elbow and your right shoulder are actually internally rotated. They're not externally rotated. And in the golf swing, they are and are supposed to be externally rotated, right? We don't want to see this at the top of our backswing. However, I will say that while it's not textbook to be like this at the top of your golf backswing, it can actually help sometimes if you have played a lot of baseball in, in your college career and your junior career and now you're playing golf and you simply can't get away from this in your top position. If you can reroute it well to shallow out this club and to then internally, externally rotate, <laughs> externally rotate your shoulder and your arm to shallow out this club and to come into the golf ball in on a good plane, that is fine by me. Some players you know, want to go back on plane and then come down on plane. Some players that are predisposed to a baseball swing, if they're up here, they only feel that shallowing if they are like this. If they're like this, they're really confused because now do you shallow more and you don't have to. So it really depends on the person. I like to teach the people, right? I mean, there is textbook golf swing, but there's also the people and the people are more important in my opinion than the textbook golf swing. So. If you're not a baseballer and if you don't have this position at the top because you actually learned more golf than baseball, 
I would recommend you go with the textbook version, which is these, this external rotation of your shoulder and your arm. So you want to make sure that this elbow is not pointing behind you. You want to make sure that's pointing down or even in front of you a little bit at the top of your backswing and don't look at this club. This is just exaggerated, but you want to make sure here, this is at least pointing down. You don't want this to point out because it's going to steepen your plane. And a lot of people then are just coming down this way too. They don't know how to shallow and reroute. Secondly, Second thing I want to talk to you guys about is your backswing. So in baseball, there really isn't much of a backswing because people are kind of already starting with a little bit of an open stance, open hips, but they're kind of like this, right? And they're waiting for the ball to come when they're batting. They're batting, right? That's the word, yes. Um, so there isn't a whole lot of, there is some rotation going back, but everything is a lot more starting at this top position. There is really no takeaway. So it's not like they're here and then they're just like, you know, rotating and they're going through. It's really a lot more starting behind you already. And in the golf swing, we obviously have a takeaway, which is really important. So a lot of the time, what I see with people that have played a lot of baseball, they are not really caring about their backswing and mainly not about their back turn, like with their core. So what happens is they stay pretty square, everything is up here, and then they just fire their hip and they never actually took the time to do this one piece takeaway where you turn your club away with your belly button, with your core, to then get up into your top position. They just kind of skip all that. And what that does, unfortunately, is it puts your hands behind you really quickly and you get stuck. So baseball players get stuck a lot because they don't rotate back they just kind of lift it away and then they rotate and see what that does to my arms. They're stuck behind me, they're not matched up. So if you're a baseball player and if you want to make sure you get unstuck, you want to make sure that you actually take your time in that backswing, you take your time for that takeaway and then you can fire. Then you can fire, you can go, 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 no problem, but do not skip the back turn huge, huge piece of information here because you want to make sure your hands can come down in front of you. If you're doing this in this, you're stuck. But if you're taking the time to turn back, your hands now can come down in front of you. Number three, and this is arguably one of the most important pieces, is your weight shift through the ball. In baseball, let me put this away real quick. In baseball, a lot of the time people are, are here and they're really loading into their right side. And the problem is they stay on that right side. That's not a problem in baseball. That's great in baseball. Some of the best batters in the world do this, obviously. And I'm not here to teach baseball. Do not judge me on my baseball knowledge. Um, just comparing the motions here. So then the problem is when they get through in baseball, you kind of want to load that right side and stay on that right side. And what happens is the weight never fully gets onto their left foot. So it always kind of looks like this, right? So that in golf is death. That in golf is not something you want to do. You don't want to do it with your driver. You don't want to do it with your irons, especially not your irons. And if you do it with your wedges, you likely miss the ball. So we want to learn that when you are going, when you're up here and when you're shifting in golf, there is a shift and there's a very similar turn with the left hip working up after that initial shift, left hip working up, but you actually always shift your weight into your front foot. So then when you're standing up, you're actually facing, your chest will be facing this wall or facing the target if you're out on the golf course or the range. And then you'll be stacked on top of that left foot and you'll be able to actually pick that right foot up off the ground. You don't wanna stand like this. What do you do in baseball? So the main misses that I see with my baseball players, students and people that love to play baseball or played baseball growing up is a push slice. So. Straight right, more right. Starts right, goes more right. <laughs> so, or it's just a complete hook, right? Two misses, but it always starts right. And it starts right because of this exact thing that I'm talking to you right now. You're going back and then they are keeping their weight on their, on their back foot. And that really makes them swing more into out. And then they basically come out of it. See where my chest points to? My chest points high, it points up, but in golf, as you're transitioning your weight here, you want your chest to actually point towards the target. My chest goes from pointing back away from the target to down at the ball to back to pointing at the target. My chest never points up. So these are the huge pieces 
that I want you to look at. If you love baseball, even if you've watched baseball, and if you have a little bit of that baseball emotion in your golf swing, these are the things you should be looking at. All right, here are the hallway drills for those three categories and the three mistakes and parallels, non-parallels that we just discussed between baseball and golf swing. So number one, again, let's look at that elbow rotation. You want to make sure that you go to your wall, your hallway, your wall, whatever it is you have, you swing back. And when you're swinging back, I don't want that right elbow to be touching the wall. In fact, I want that right elbow to be parallel to that wall pointing down. So this, and then drop it in front of you. This, drop it in front of you. You don't want to be touching the wall with your right elbow. Number two, your backwards rotation, your takeaway. Do not skip your backswing. You're going to stand like this, you're going to have a wall behind you and you want to make sure that when you're taking your club away, you are actually opening up your hips and you let your chest face this wall behind you. And we don't want to be like that, right? We don't want to be our chest pointing in front of us. We want to make sure we get that chest pointed at the back wall and we're nice and high and then we're rotating through. Number three, which was the weight shift. We're going to keep this orientation in our hallway and now both walls matter. We are going to take it back and combine this two. Take it back, as we just said, make sure this points towards this wall. As you're coming down, make sure your chest points down at the ball and then starts pointing towards this wall. And as you are finishing, you want to make sure that chest is fully pointed at the wall and you want to make sure you can actually lift up that foot without falling backwards. If you fall forward, I'm okay with that. Another good drill is if you're on the course, you can do this in the hallway too. Nice back turn. Swing through, show you this with my little short club. Back turn, swing through and walk, right? You want to make sure that you don't fall backwards. All right, golfers, so those three things are the parallels and kind of challenges that people face if they watch a lot of baseball, if they love playing baseball, when they start golf. So let's make sure you keep an eye on it. And even if you're not a baseball player, you may be making one or two of these mistakes. So I hope this helps. I hope you love it. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and always subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and I can't wait to see you guys next time.